Connecting the dots. Connecting his guests to the world. Creating more connections. Welcome to The Connection with your host, Jay Morales. Podcasting from the Parkville Studios. Good afternoon. This segment is brought to you by the B4B Symposium, Make an Impact, November 7th at the Omaha Plaza. Seven incredible speakers, including a keynote by Paul Jarrett, the CEO of Bulu Box. Seven speakers, food trucks, networking, happy hour. Make sure you get your tickets ASAP. Make an Impact Symposium, November 7th with B4B. I am so excited for this Blackstone broadcast series that uh, I, I couldn't stay, I couldn't sleep last night because I was trying to pronounce my next guest's name uh, correctly, and he's like, it's just far. So I have John Farr, the proprietor for Script Town Brewing Company. John, how are you, sir? I'm wonderful, Jay. It's Friday in the Blackstone, so it doesn't get any better than I, that unless I, it's Saturday. Can't complain, seriously. And you know what? When you own a business, every day is kind of Friday and Monday at the same time. Mm, you that is true. <laughs> I'm not going not gonna to dispute that. So, John, um, Script Town, Blackstone, Take me to when you first opened and take me to when you first said, I'm going to open a brewery in Blackstone. We had started working on a business plan uh, in 1997. And um, at the time, uh, it, was, it was a little bit ahead of the curve here, here in Omaha. I had had a conversation with John Hickenlooper, uh, who was the governor of Colorado, also he was an investor in the upstream downtown when it first opened. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I happened to be down there in 1997 uh, with my homebrew club, and I heard he was there, and I said, boy, I would sure like to talk to him, and the wait staff arranged it for me. And When I you said, say homebrew club, you did this on an I, amateur level I did at home. For 30 years, I was a home brewer. Uh, in, in 1996, after homebrewing 10 years, I was national home brewer of the year in 1996 I, I saw that american home brewers association in new orleans that's correct yes that's to show muddy mo amber ale one, oh. of our, one of our stock beers that's available in our tasting room. so you can get it is that a year-round beer it's a beer we have on all the time correct? that's awesome keep yeah. going john thank so you so anyway uh after talking with mr hickenlooper he said you know i wouldn't do it right now and uh, for a lot of reasons, uh, the primarily being that the craft, boom, uh, craft beer boom was go had gone through its first renaissance in the late 80s and into the early 90s. And at that time, a lot of faux microbrews were being chased and flushed out of the market. And as he goes, you know, if you're going to package your beer, you're probably going to have trouble getting your product on the shelf. And there were some other reasons, too. And at the time, I had uh, my wife and I were parents to an 11-year-old, a 9-year-old, and a 3-year-old. Right. So we thought, Busy. you know, we it's probably not a good time to take this risk anyway. So we sat back and, and just waited and then just watched the beer culture in Omaha just grow exponentially the next 15 years. What do you think fueled that boom? Well, I, 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 well, again, it was this craft beer. Home brewing had a lot to do with that. Uh, I think it made people aware that there were other beers out there that uh, had a lot of flavor. We, as a culture, became assimilated to mass-produced yes beers like and again you know i don't knock any beer understand you know it's a hot day and there's nothing better than a bush latte they're on the <laughs> golf course great plug for them but they're there not sponsoring go. this but show. that is right <laughs> but but again the, the germans call it gemutlichkeit it's that beer you're having at that time at that moment with that person that makes it special so it can be anything but uh it, we I, I just think it was an awareness and people started wanting more and um when we started look, revisiting our business plan again in 2012 uh, we had first started looking at a location in papillion where uh, now there's two breweries about a half a yes. mile from where we were across okay. train and pint nine yes yes and then uh through scott stevens who's a business partner of my wife and i uh Scott had introduced us to Jay Lund, and I met Jay. Yes. And then uh, Matt Dwyer, and okay. they met with us, and we started talking about Blackstone, and we walked through what was the Moolah space at the time. Okay, that was Look, almost, that's what we, you almost we, picked. We looked at that originally, but then we didn't think it was going to function very well for a brewery because we thought it was important that people would be able to see the facility. Yeah, I think and, so. And uh, the brewery, you know, the brewery, brewery equipment is heavy. 
and we would have had to reinforce that floor and it would it would have cost us a lot of money just to get that space ready to go so we worked with matt and jay for a few more months and then settled on our current location which is a couple doors east of yes. where Moolah yeah, is now. right and uh here we are uh so our business plan is actually 180 degrees from where we envisioned it we so were, it's totally different it is we were going to be focused on a wholesale production with a small tasting room well here in the blackstone we're focused i mean we're, our, our tap room is, is where our business is right and uh in 2007 there were about 2400 breweries in the united states Fast forward to 2019, there's yeah. now over 6,000, and the vast majority of that growth are small breweries like Script Town, like Farnham House, like this major, uh, some of our other Omaha brethren as well. Yes. And so brewing has become very localized, and people want to support local. And, I think they and, do. The movement right now. It certainly is. And so uh, as a result of that, half of the beer that we make is actually distributed. We do sell our beer to other bars and restaurants in Omaha and Lincoln, okay. draft only. Uh, so about half of our gallonage is sold outside. But... The profit margin uh, on the tap sales in our room are yes. roughly 90 percent for yes. a pint of beer, and so the revenue stream it, we might be fifty fifty on the gallonage, but the revenue is eighty twenty. Okay. So yes, we want know. we want people to come to our tap room. Absolutely. So uh, let's talk to that person. Maybe Bill or Jim or Shelly. She's never been there. He's never been there, and maybe they're just not educated about uh, craft beer, right. true craft beer. We're not just talking beer. We're talking craft beer yes tell me why they should come to script town well at script town you know the thing is craft craft beer uh, means different things to different people and uh it could mean to someone that oh this is just a very small artisanal operation and they they're very much hands-on that could be craft it could be to another person a a fruit beer or something that is like a mango habanera gosa or something you know uh, or it could be a classic example of a of a german lager that, Ooh, you know yes. so at, at, at script town we we know that our real market is our fringe craft drinkers or people that are just wanting to dip that toe into the pool yeah and so we have a couple of beers. And in fact, most of the beers that we serve are normal to mid-range alcohol levels. We don't do anything stupefying. Sure. Like, so I was in Germany, and uh, they had Perminators. Mm-hmm. Have you? I don't know Doppel if you ever. Bo- yes. Doppelbox. Oh yes. my gosh! And they were they were horrid, but if you it got the job done. Yeah, that it did, and <laughs> it they're, was they're warm. Very very rich. Yeah, it's it's cool. I wouldn't say they're warm, but they're not, they're not ice cold, you know. So um, let me ask, when you, um, you know, when you think of that person that hasn't been there yet and they're intimidated, right? They're like, gosh, I don't know anything about craft beer. What would you tell that person right now? I would tell them to drink a Saddle Creek wheat. We, m- we make a couple of beers that I would call entry-level beers into the craft market. <laughs> entry-level, right, with training wheels on there. It's, well, and, <laughs> you, well, and, you know, you can have a craft beer without having to sit down and dissect it. You know, to me, it's about drinkability and wanting to have a beer that's fresh and tastes good is representative of the style, yes. for instance, uh, and, and, and refreshing. And uh, When you say drinkability, see, let, let's talk about this because I'll be honest with you, I am not an aficionado when it comes to beer, but you don't need to be. I just, I think craft, oh my gosh, we're going to go in there. There's going to be a lot of people who know what they're doing. I'm just going to be sipping the wrong way. I mean, it's crazy talk what I do to myself. I mean, people think that way. Right, they, they do. And they'll talk themselves out of a lot of stuff. You know, yes. we, we do offer taster trays for people where you can get four or five ounce pours. Uh, you can, you know, any of our staff would, would steer someone to, we typically ask them, what do you like? You know, and and then and then they'll tell us, and we'll say, well, we have this or we have this, and you know, people, a lot of people drink with their eyes. Yes, they and do. So they see something dark, and so they're intimidated by that. Yeah, and yeah, they shouldn't be. Yeah, and and then truth be told, nut job, our brown ale, it's brown nut in job. color. Yeah, we we like to have fun with the names of our beers. And, That's uh, hilarious. <laughs> 
<laughs> we have we have we have some other doozies too. Oh my gosh! But but people see a dark beer and they think, oh my gosh, that's so strong. Well, the reality is, Nut Job is like four point six percent ABV, which yes. is not strong at all. Sure. Take Budweiser's four and a half percent. Sure. So it's only seventeen IBUs, which stands for International Bittering Units. Okay, so that's the lower. So, the, the I lower didn't even know that. The, yeah, the lower the number, the the less bitter the beer. The higher the number, the more bitter the beer. You. So, just hit a value bomb right there. Mm-hmm. IBU. The lower the number, the, the less bitter. The less bitter the beer. The higher the IBU. It's does it does that mean it plays to the sweet side or to the? Well, it could it could still be sweet underneath, but you're definitely going to have hot bitterness to it. Okay. Because uh, I mean, you can taste you can taste sweet, and you always taste sweet on the front of your tongue. Yeah, absolutely. Bitterness on the back, salty and and sour on the sides of your tongue. See, and people don't think about this, so um, I want to go back to the story. I want people to get to know John, right? I want them to get to know you. You were in corporate America, right before Correct. this. Yes. Someone you told the people around you said, "Hey, guys, I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. Tell me, bring me back to that day." So, you know, again, we had, I had been working on this business plan for a while. And, um, you know, it's funny. I, the company I worked for, uh, Payflex, uh, was a benefits administrator. They yeah. actually were in the Blackstone Hotel. Okay. And so I remember vividly when the Crescent Moon opened. Yes. Because the Crescent Moon was our north office on Friday afternoon. That's, so, the, know, that's where staff remotely. meetings happen. That's it's, where staff meetings yes, happen. Yes, 4 o'clock, north conference room, Friday afternoon. And uh, so a lot, a lot of what uh, Bilba Burke did at the Moon, I think, set the stage for a lot of. I would what say hap- so. What happened here in Omaha, but but working for corporate, I mean, I, I don't. Th- again, this was a hobby for me, and so it was it was fun to brew beer on the weekends occasionally, and uh, I I loved enter competitions. I, I was a ribbon hog. Yeah, well, and my my old storage room in the basement just has all these ribbons and medals and stuff hanging. Why in Why don't there. you have that out in your restaurant? Oh, I or just your, I just I room. just don't think it would look fit with the aesthetic, you know, really? in our room. Yeah, I yeah. think it, I think a curio would belong in there somewhere to. Kind if let, we could tell find, the story, yeah. if we could find room, right? If we could find room, yeah, we, we would squeeze it in there. So, you know, when you talk about your business and leaving corporate America, again, were there people that said, John, don't do it? No, uh, not at all, actually. You know, at my <laughs> age, uh, you know, if I was going to take the chance, it was time to do it. Okay, yeah, okay, and, I get it. And, uh, you know, the company I'd worked for was purchased by, uh, was bought out, so it, the culture had changed. Yes. It, it was time to go. Absolutely. And so I negotiated a job elimination, and I was <laughs> able to get some severance out of it. And How'd you do that? Well, hey, I'm going to open a brewery. The, uh, the, give department, me some money. the department I managed was going to be outsourced eventually. And, oh, and they gosh. knew it. So, you know, I, I left on good terms. Absolutely. You, know? and, and you seem like a great and, guy. And I don't miss it at all. You know, it, it, it is true that when people say that if you love what you do, it's not work. Right. You know, I'm at, I'm at Script Town every day. You know, Sundays are the days I, I try to stay away as much as possible. You try. It's a family day. But I'm always there in the morning. We have beer in production. So I stop in and make sure things are going good. I'm, I'm the business manager. So right. I, you know, I make sure the cash drawer is ready to go for the guys. And I, I, you know, I check the receipts from last night's business. So I got my eyes on it all the time. You got good staff there. You got we great do. staff. We have a, we have an awesome staff. I mean, how can you be angry working in a brewery? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of attitude adjustment around you all the time. Oh, I'm sure. So, you know, most people, when they um, become entrepreneurs like yourself when you did, because it was a hobby for you. You worked mm-hmm. in corporate America. I'm sure that, you know, you, you did things on the side as well, maybe to experiment. But when you took the plunge, what did you find most surprising about being an entrepreneur in this space? Well, we were we were... We took a calculated risk coming to the Blackstone. We felt we felt good about what it could become. You were first amongst we were the, a lot of we people. We were the first to sign a lease with Green Slate Development. Wow. But uh, So we've seen all this come up around us. But I would say, personally, I knew how to make beer. Yes, but no I, doubt. But I didn't know the business of beer. And okay. so, so That's learning, fair. learning how to sell beer, how it works when you sell your beer outside of your place in wholesale distribution, you know, picking a distributor, uh, you know, yeah. learning the hard reality that even though you have a distributor that sells your beer, you're still responsible to sell your beer. 
Oh, they, no move, they move a lot of brands other than your own no as doubt. well, too. So you, you still need to go out and keep in front of people. You've, you're the face of the business. So th- that was the single biggest thing that I think I had to learn. Um, you know, the numbers and, you know, business-related things, day-to-day, payroll, personnel, yes. those yes. are things I've done my whole life. That was right. the easy part of the job. Okay. It really was. Yeah. You know, it still is, actually. So when you said to yourself, okay, I'm... I'm doing this, uh, things are going. This is how many years into the operation now, formally? We are on our fifth year of business. We'll celebrate year, we'll start year six on December 1st. Congrats. Thank you. The voyage of year six. I mean, that, that's a whole five years behind you. Mm-hmm. Name something you failed at, that you've learned, that you want to tell other people, avoid this. I know it's a hard question. That is a hard question. I mean, because I, I like to think, you know, you like to think you're successful all the time, but it's absolutely true. You do fail. Yes. Um, There's an entrepreneur out there wishing he, oh, I wish I did Well, I, I wish that we would have done a better job of uh, picking a lender. I, 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 okay. I, I think that. See, I wouldn't have thought that. It's very important um, that, that your banker knows exactly what it is you're trying to do. Right. And we learned that the hard way. And I tell you, there's not enough beers we could drink right now to loop you in on that story completely because it's it's quite a conversation. I I really think that in in a lot of ways we were set up to fail uh, our first year just because of uh, the inability, and I'm not going to name names. Understand, but the inability of our lender to not really understand what it was we were trying to accomplish as a brewery. They did they didn't know what we were doing, and as a result of that. a, so a lot of no's that we got probably should have been yeses. So here's what I'm saying to you. Most banks say, you know what? I'm, I'm all here to give you and help you and help you grow. That's their job. It is their That's job. That's what they say it is. Right. But at the end of the day, they love the finance charges. So that, that um, would it be safe to say that you've got a couple good referrals now for at least where to go? Yes. Okay, good. So yes. I'll make sure to include your information so people get in contact with you. See, when I ask guests that question, it's, it's many different things, but this is the very first time that I've heard pick your lender. My heartburn, you know, all, my, all of our heartburn early on came from uh, <laughs> our financing. No doubt, because if they don't understand, they won't support, right. and, and then they demand. And I'm not saying they were bad people, but they no. just didn't do their homework. And uh, as a result, they, I mean, they, I could have lost my house. <laughs> You're more than a piece of paper. That's exactly right. You're more than a piece of paper. Yeah. So um, I would like to um, ask you, what is something that you want people to know that they might overlook that is not normally advertised with Script Town? hey, this is something we do, this is something we have, and no one knows, really. Well, something that's really new to us is the fact that folks can get food now at Script Town. Mm. Tell uh, me about that. As a brewery, uh, you know, we did not want to get into the restaurant business. We thought that it was a a major task enough being able to make and sell beer. So fairly recently, we have sublet out a room at our place that was formerly a small party room That's for Momo's. Us. Katmandu Momo's Katmandu Station. Katmandu Momo's. Oh my Sagar gosh. Sagar Garung uh, and, and company uh, talked to us and they did a pop-up restaurant in our place for three days a week for about eight or nine months. I heard about that. Yeah, it's it's they're, they're terrific. And and last, uh, I think it was late last fall, Sauger expressed an interest about doing a brick and mortar location. So we started talking about the room. He came up with the plan. <laughs> I talked to my landlord. Uh, we arranged the financing for the plumbing and electrical improvements that ultimately I'm responsible for. Hundred percent. But uh, but we we end up doing a, a sublet, and he you know signed on with us for five years that run concurrent with our our, wow. our lease. Yes. And uh, they're knocking it out of the park. That's awesome. And and the fact is, it's a 320 square foot space. They're wow. crammed in there, and there's no place to sit. So people must walk into Script Town to sit down and eat their momos, and they are spicy, so they go great with beer. <laughs> that's the winning combination. And, and so yeah. that. Yeah, so that surprised, I mean, you know, that surprised you, right? That great partnership. It, it was an experimental partnership. It, it really time. was, but, you know, it was just after a short amount of time where we realized that he was the real deal, and we wanted him to be successful as well, too. I can and, sense and, that from and, you, and, and we And we knew that if food was big, and, and we had talked about that off and on a couple different times early on. We had a couple of food trucks that, that uh, one of them... Um, 
lasted about all of 90 days and the other <laughs> one was less than a year and yeah it, you know that's hard work and and uh, one of them had a really bad business plan the other one just didn't have their heart into it you know and so uh, we we tried but you know uh, it just it just didn't pan out for those people. So let me ask you this: uh, the businesses amongst Blackstone, there are many businesses here where which are starting, some which are established. Talk about the culture of how you guys are working with each other, or is there any need for improvement to start working with each other? This is a story you're telling, John. Right. The best well, being here in the Blackstone, uh, what what really brought us here was the vision that uh, Greenslate had and how they curated. The tenants um, that they they handpicked. I to, love curated. To, to, I love that word. To, yeah, they, they really did, and and to start this district, and so all of us are small business. We're all family, family owned, and we all know each other. And so the opportunities for us to collaborate and and do things together, it, it, it's it's very there's a very willing spirit to do that among everyone down here. It's important for a community like this that's emerging that it you does. guys do that. One of the things that we still do at our place, for instance, Noli's Pizza. We didn't have yes. food. We talked to Joel and Chris Marsh yeah. at Noli's about the possibility of us selling their pizza at our place and having them deliver it. Yeah. Uh, and and they, they were all over that. So we actually, and they were cramped for space before they opened their new one. They, actually, they're still cramped for space because they're really crowded. Yeah. But but people can come to our place. We could call in the order. They would run the pie up. And so My we, gosh, we, we awesome. did that for a whole year for we determined that this was really working and Joel wanted to continue doing it and so yeah. so we do that uh, we do twice a year we do an event with Coneflower the ice cream I shop I love Coneflower we do, I will tell you I do. drive from West Omaha for that place it's so good and we do beer floats with them you know, I know they, I they, saw that on, I, I saw it on, on Instagram ice cream uh, you know, we've uh, done events, uh, obviously, uh, you know, with Butterfish. Last night. With last Matt. night. Talk yeah. about that event last night. Yeah. It's so different. The beer and sushi pairing with Butterfish. Uh, we did it uh, earlier this year uh, during Omaha Beer Week, and it was we did it actually in the brewery. And so it was tight in there. Yeah. We had maybe 70 or 75 people, and you couldn't even move. It was just like a raucous cocktail party. But That's it was awesome. so much fun. And so we decided this time around that we were going to break it down into smaller smaller groups. Uh, we are in the process of opening a room at Script Down called the Kaufman Room, which is going to be an event I saw that on your course. website. I saw yes. that. Saw the Kaufman Room. 60, no, almost 80? About 70 people okay. is, is okay. what the CO will be. Yes. And it's going to be a venue uh, for rehearsal dinners, uh, wedding receptions. Business meetings. Reception, business meetings. Uh, supposedly business meetings. Yes, yes. Yes, <laughs> that's so. Thirty nine twenty two Farnham Street is is there is the Script Town uh, Script Town address. That's awesome. Yes. So uh, we're gonna sample some beers here now. Hey, Rye Dog, Rye Dog, can you come over here? All right. So we're gonna um, we're gonna go sample. Will you walk us through these um, samples? And and Rye Dog, uh, he's with uh, Come Over Contracting. So oh my gosh, here we go. We're we're live on the. <laughs> that's awesome. Kylie, we're gonna need. Um, Yes, Kylie. Ky Kylie, here Kylie. you go. <laughs> We're we gonna need one, one more. Yes, here we go. So, um, go ahead and put these headphones on. I'm gonna guess that your position number two. Go ahead and try that. Go ahead and see, right dog, if you can count. Oh, can you go ahead and talk in there? Yeah, we can chug them, right? No, 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 no chugging. Go ahead and try that. Go ahead and try that. Test, 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 test. Uh, let's see here. And that's oh. Oh, make sure. Click on that. So let's make sure that's in. Are you good? Uh, try the, try this other one. Yeah. Try try number three. Here we go. That's better. Let's move this aside. All this beer here. Okay. Can you hear yourself in the headphones? Uh, I can. Oh, there you oh, yeah, go. There we go. All right. So why don't you guys introduce yourself to each other? I'm John Farr. I'm Ryan DeVolt. Ryan. Yep. Make Pleasure. sure you talk into there. Okay. So so. John, you're going to walk us through these um, samples. Let's go. Which which one will, will we go first? I think we're going to start with the palest of the, of the three beers, okay. and that is uh, Fest Hellas. Is, is that this one right here? Yes. It's the pa yes. And, yes. And, and, I'm and color so, deficient, by the way. So this is a Munich style, our interpretation of a Munich style Hellas. If you were to go to, to Munich, Germany, the everyday beer that you would drink in Munich yes. is a Hellas. 
And okay. it is, it's a blonde lager. We do it in the fall. It'll be served at our Talkoberfest next week. Ta uh, say one more time. Talkoberfest. 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 Yeah, and you're going to have a mariachi band. We're going to have a mariachi yes. band and two polka bands as well. That's so. awesome. I'll make sure to include that in the links as well. So, and when it comes down to tasting beer, um, I always tell people, you want to, especially if you're with a glass, you want to nose the beer first. Literally smell the beer. Sure. Smell the malt. Because if you can't smell, you can't taste. That's true. Okay. I know. Sometimes when and, I have allergies, so I can't. And so this particular beer is not, is not very, it, it's got a little bit of sweetness to it. It's not really bitter at all. What's the it, IBU on the this The IBU is 17. See, I'm learning. Can, I'm can, learning. Can, can I just say she smells really good? Yes. She, well, she thank smells you. amazing. Yes. What's the name of this one again? This is called Fest Hellas. Fest Hellas. Yes. Okay. So can Prost. we drink it? Let's, let's, go, let's go all in, guys. Gross. All drink. right. Let's taste it. Do we do this, too? Mm. Mm. You, can, you can swirl it if you want to. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it's but it's very it's very crisp. It's clean. It's got an underlying sweetness to it. It doesn't taste heavy. No, it's not. It's no. not. It's very well attenuated, which means it fermented out very very clean. It is. This beer is actually five point three percent. Ooh, a little stronger so than li your average. It's a little bit stronger, oh, but it doesn't yes. drink like it. It's trying to get me drunk. <laughs> no, no, this tastes amazing. Let's yeah. hold on. Do, is am I crazy to say that I like my beer a little less cold? You can taste it a lot better if it's not ice cold. I agree, yeah. and I don't like it ice cold. People say, right. "Oh, it's got to well, be ice cold for me." Craft beers, I, I think, are meant to be enjoyed, you know, a little bit warmer. And yes. You know, well, Bush Light or Coors Light doesn't really make any difference. When I was There's stationed in Germany, when I was stationed in Germany, they had uh, beers in barrels with water, mm -hmm. and they literally were lukewarm. Yeah. So that's how it, was. it wasn't on ice. Well, if you go to Germany, you, you, you can't get ice anywhere in your beverages. You know that. You know, in Europe, that's true. you don't yes. see it. That's true. So, that's but true. but they, they do refrigerate their beers, but they're, they're not as served as cold. Yes. Typically, the rule of thumb is the paler the beer, the colder it is. Okay. The warmer the beer, the slightly elevated temperature allows the aromas and flavors to come out a little bit I can bit taste more. the aftertaste, and I like the aftertaste in this Clean one. malt. Yeah, that's okay. So I didn't know that. Can I just say I like yeah. my beer warm when I forget to put it in the refrigerator? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, okay. that's fine. That's fine. To, I mean, to each his own. Yes, no <laughs> doubt. Okay, walk us through the next so one. So the next beer is the Amber, and this beer we call Heilige Namen. Heilige Namen. And what Heilige Namen mean? means holy name. Holy name. I knew, I knew Namen was, and but so I didn't know And so a little side story about this beer. We were approached several years ago by Holy Name School. <laughs> of course. About, about naming, naming our fall beer, uh, an Oktoberfest style, uh, after Holy Name. And there's an anonymous donor yeah. that for every pint that is sold in our tasting room from August until the end of October... This anonymous, this anonymous donor matches the number of pints sold times five dollars. So you're marketing this, and, and and you know we it's just naming rights. But the school is you know gets last year we sold a thousand beers. The guy wrote a check for five thousand dollars to the school. Well, we're Catholics. Yeah, so we were and we drink. <laughs> no doubt, so, yeah. and fish fries. So anyway, this is this is a Vienna style, and it has got a a ele very elegant malt character. Okay, let's so, try. Yeah, go ahead and go ahead. You say roast? Does that Right? Roast. 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 It does have a little bit more bitterness than the it Hellas, does. but but not not a no, lot. No, it doesn't make my face. But it, up, but, it, but again, it is very well attenuated. This is about the same ABV as the Hellas, but it's got a rounder uh, malt flavor to it. Obviously, more color yes. from from the different kinds. We use five different malts in this beer to achieve that. So where do you source uh, some of your products from? Are you a local supporter as well? Is that, we, is that well, that we buy we buy local when we can. Yes. But, but the quality, you know, you can't make a German beer without German malts. <laughs> no doubt. So we buy most of our malt from Brewer's Supply Group, which is located in Minneapolis. Okay. And so we manage our, our inventory just in time. Yes. We can order it on Monday. It'll show up on a truck on Wednesday. That's great logistics, so, by yeah, the way. So and that it works, works, it works great for us. You said business plan, like seven times throughout this conversation um, in your mind um, how important is it for people to have a business plan because you know what I hear too often people don't have one or they don't believe in it, it it's a good exercise to go through just to make you look at every single thing how often do you know. go through yours not not enough okay honestly I mean I, I, I have not looked 
I, I really want to go back right now and look at what I projected for year five. Sure. Five years ago, and I haven't done that. Well, you and know, I can coach you through that, too. Once a quarter, we <laughs> can sit down and have a meeting we, at on, your brewery. Honestly, I, and I think that is very, that's something we have failed to do. We talked about failures, failure, is to look more at that. But we have been so invested in, in growing our business. Uh, you know, you, you, you can't move forward by looking back either. You know, right, so no we're, doubt. We just, no you doubt. just want to keep your eyes on the ball. But, yes. But, but yeah, business plans are extremely important just, just for the reality. Let's try this final final um, beer here. So and, the last um, beer here, it, you'll notice that it's pink in color. Yeah, I do. So I'm color deficient, but I can tell you it's got like a rosy, I, yes, I'm guessing it, rosy. It, it is. This beer is called Petal Pusher, and it is brewed. It's a blonde ale that is brewed with hibiscus flowers. Hibiscus. That's good for, the, that's good for your health. It is good for your health. <laughs> they make tea out of hibiscus. No so doubt. So we make beer out of hibiscus. Okay. The, honestly, we added the flower petals. Yes. Uh, it had less than 24 hours of contact time with the beer to pick up this color, and okay. then it also when you when you take a sip of it, you're you're gonna you're gonna get a tart tartness from good, it. Good, good, because I do sour, like that. It's not sour, but it is tart, tart, almost like cranberry, okay. and maybe just a touch of you know, t uh, tart cherry, but very refreshing. So I can tell you, it's not a fruity tart. It's like a nice, mild tart that just. Hold on, let me try that one more time. Yeah. Do, do your think, research. Right what do you think? What do you think? Uh, mine's gone, so <laughs> pretty good. Do your you research. You gotta savor. You have to do savor. Do your research, Jay. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we. That's, that's a, so different. Yeah, we, we, we serve that during the summer, and it's extremely popular in our tasting room. What's the alcohol content in this one? That is uh, about, that's 5.6. Oh. Seems to be pretty uh, uh, good in my stomach, too. Yes. It, yeah, yeah, it, it does. It, yeah. it doesn't feel hard on your, like, I liver? like that. On your it liver? sells itself. Yeah, on my liver. <laughs> that, that color actually sells the beer, too, because we serve it in a tall cylindrical Pilsner glass. When people see that that pink liquid coming out of that tap handle instead of something golden, well, what is that? You know? So, right off, have you ever been to Script Town? Uh, no, no. So, so would you now, because of this, at least attempt to go to, to, to learn more? As long as the beers are bigger than these little. Yeah, cups. absolutely. You know <laughs> yes. the beers are way bigger than <laughs> yes, that. Yes, they Come are. Um, we're giving away four growlers today, right? Uh, I think three. Growlers. Three. Okay. Gay. Three, three growlers. Wow. Three growlers. <laughs> John's like, don't give away the house. I just don't have another one to give them. No, hey, that's great. So, um, John, parting shots on um, the your story of Blackstone, why you want to meet people to, to visit your business, and um, just invite people. What? Tell me. Last parting shots. It is uh, the space that we have here is uh, it's a hundred year old building. Uh, the aesthetics of the space are really cool. I I don't think there's another place like it in Omaha. Uh, from the, the, the exposed brick, the open ceilings, the, the ghost signs that are on the brick walls. Uh, it, it's chill. It's not a sports bar. We have three TVs, but they're never, I mean, they might be on, but uh, we have a great staff that curates some really good music, uh, you know, their own playlist, two or three of them are musicians. It's just a place where you can actually come and chill and enjoy, enjoy a good beer. John, I have learned so much about you today beyond just Script Town, beyond the brewer. I mean, I think it's important that people recognize that it's more than just beer. That's right. I it's, think it's, it's more people important. too. And, and to be honest, we're in a people business. And your business is, is to connect other people to your business so that they can enjoy what you're trying to make an impact with. That's true. John, thank you so much for being on. Thank you, Jay. Today, we want to say thank you to the Omaha Gift Company. If you need a gift and are looking to make an impact, the Omaha Gift Company can take care of all your gift-giving needs. Use code JAY and get the secret discount at the theomahagiftcompany.com. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, we'll have uh, three more in series this afternoon. John from Script Town, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you. Thank you, Jay.